There are many different ways that you can create a banner or buttons for your Canvas course. There are many websites and apps that can help you out with this, but today I wanted to show you Keynote, one of my favorite apps to use to create banners and buttons. I enjoy using Keynote for a variety of reasons, including the built-in shapes library, as well as the customizable features that are easy for users of any ability level. Let's get started. First, you'll need to click to open Keynote. If it is not located down here in your dock, you can click on the magnifying glass in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, then type Keynote. Click to open Keynote. Click the New Document button to get started. You can choose any of the templates to start with, but I usually start with basic white. Next, we will add a blank slide. In the upper left-hand corner, click the Add Slide button, then choose Blank. For the buttons that I want to create, this is about the right size. But for my banner, this will not be the right size that I need for my picture. This would be too tall and would take up a lot of extra space on my page. To change the size of your document to fit your Canvas course, click on the Document button in the upper right-hand corner. Under Slide Size, click on Custom Slide Size. As I mentioned, I wanted the height to be a little bit less for my banner, so I will just decrease that. There is no perfect size for a banner or button. You can play around with these a little bit until you find the right size that you are looking for. You will notice that it not only changed the size of the current slide, but also the size of my previous slide. It is important to note that you will probably want to design your banner in one document and your buttons in a separate document. Let's get started creating a banner. The first thing that I want to do is change the color of the background. To do this, I will click on the Format button in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Under Background, you can choose to have a plain color fill if you want to. Or you can choose a different kind of fill, such as an image or gradient. Under a gradient fill, you can select different colors and they will slowly fade between one and the other. You can also change the angle at which they change. Next, we will add text. Click on the text button in the middle of the top of the screen. Type the name of your class. Adjust the font size using the buttons on the right hand side of the screen. You can also adjust the font if you'd like. You can easily adjust the color by clicking on the text color dropdown. If you would like to add another text box, you can continue repeating these steps. If you want, you could even add shapes. The Shapes Library is searchable. If you click in the search bar and type something, you will see all different options come up. You can adjust these under the Style menu on the right-hand side of the screen. You can also arrange things by sending them to the back or bringing them to the front. And back under the style menu, if you want, you can even fade things. When you have finished creating your banner, you will need to save it. First, let's delete the extra slide that we have. Click the slide in the sidebar, then delete. Next, we will export it. Click on File, Export to, Images. You can choose if you want to export all of your slides or just a specific set of them. Next is a very important step. Under Format, you want to choose JPEG Smaller File Size. This will make the images able to easily load for your students over the internet. Then click Next. Choose the name of a folder that you would like the images to be saved in. In this case, I made mine banner underscore canvas. Be sure to save your document if you'd like to use it again later. 
Here I clicked Command S to bring up the Save menu and typed a name to save my document under. Note that this document will be actually able to be edited, whereas the pictures we exported earlier will not be able to be changed. It is recommended to save this if you plan to make any changes to it in the future. Next, let's create a new Keynote document to make our buttons. Again, I will choose the blank white document. When you are designing your buttons, you want to think about what will be most important for your students to quickly and easily find. If it's something they will need to use frequently, it should definitely be a button. The first thing I will do is click and drag to select the boxes that are already on this slide, then click delete to clear them. Next, I will format the slide as I want my buttons to look before I start duplicating it for all of the different buttons. To do this, I'm going to start with a shape, but you could start with whatever you'd like. I click the shape menu and I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle. Click and drag on the handles to change the size of your object. For even faster resizing, you can hold down the option key and your shape will resize from the middle. When you are creating your buttons, you will want to think about how your students will be using them. If you are working with elementary students, you may want to choose different colors for each button because your students may or may not have the ability to read yet. If you're working with middle or high school, you can probably stick to a more simple color scheme. Using the style menu as we did before, I changed the color of my shape to yellow. It may also be helpful to add shapes to some of your buttons to help your students more easily navigate. Next, click the text button to add the text for your button. I recommend starting with the longest button that you will need. That way you know that the text will also fit on all of the other buttons that are shorter words. Again, you can format your text by clicking on the Format button at the top of your screen, then making sure you're on the Text tab. As you format your button, make sure you think about readability. Choose a font that is easily readable, and choose colors that are contrasting from the background of your button. You may also want to choose colors that coordinate well with the banner that you created earlier. Once you are happy with your first button, you can begin duplicating the button and changing the text or colors as you would like. To do this, you will need to right click on the slide on the left hand side of your screen. Hold down the control key on your keyboard, then click on your trackpad. Click the duplicate button. You will see you now have a second copy of the slide. Another fast way to do this is to hold down the option key and click and drag a new copy of your slide. Next, you can change the text on the different slides so that it matches what you need your buttons to say. When you are happy with your buttons, we will again need to save them. Click on File, Export to Images. Then again, remember to change the format to JPEG, smaller file size. Click Next and type a name for the folder that you would like your images to be put into. You will see that I now have a folder labeled Buttons Canvas and it houses each one of my buttons. Later, we will use these to upload to our homepage of our Canvas course.